Lexi. Ray. How long have you guys been married? Going on five years. Five years. Have you ever bought something in faith for when we have a baby? Oh, we did. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, at Seaport, we bought that. Um, we bought that sign that said, "I loved you." Before you, before were, even you were even born, something yeah. like that. Yeah, we still have it. Yeah, we still have it. I think it's hung up, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna hang it up. Okay. But yeah, I, I bought that, and um, yeah, how about you? Same thing. Okay. I think there's a couple times where I wanted to buy onesies, <laughs> but you said no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Do you ever get sad when you hear a pregnancy announcement? Um, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm happy for the couple, but uh, internally, uh, it, I may, I'm sad for myself uh, and for you because we're not at that stage yet. Um, just hearing other people go through that, I mean, it's, it's so joyous and it's great and it's a blessing, but at the same time, you know, we go back home and it's like, man, we want that so bad too, you know, and it, it's hard knowing that uh, people, you've gone to their weddings and then you know, you find out three months later they're pregnant. It's like, man, we've been married for like five years and we're we're not even there yet. And so I know in God's timing it's, it's going to happen, but it, it's, it's a little disheartening. But I know he has a plan for us, so it's going to happen. How about you? Um, I think I used to get sad, especially the first, you know, three years of being married. I know we wanted to try right away and it wasn't happening. and. We tried so many different things, mm -hmm. and um, people were giving us so much advice and giving us ovulation kits and yeah. all these other things to try to get pregnant, and it just wasn't happening, and yet all our friends were getting pregnant, and so I was jealous and I was getting sad, but lately, or at least the last year, knowing yeah. that we have four kids waiting for us, um, our embryos that are frozen right now, um, knowing that they're going to be here really soon, mm -hmm. that gives me so much hope. And now when I hear about other people getting pregnant, there is still a little bit of sadness only because our kids aren't physically here with us yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm also happy and excited for what God has planned for us. Yeah. Have you ever felt less of a man for not being able to get pregnant? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a definite insecurity. I think not only myself, but other men have, um, you know, you get checked out and everything's fine, but for whatever reason, we just haven't been blessed that way. Um, and yeah, there, there's definite insecurity uh, about that. And so it's like, I mean, it's not rocket science, you know, you, you do the deed and, and that's the job that you get done. but. Um, you know, you don't get the job done. And so I kind of feel like it's like I'm playing basketball, you know, and I'm just, I'm shooting shots, but you know, they're all air balls or, or something like that. So, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I do feel insecure uh, about that. I feel less of a man, but I know that's gonna pass because of the situation. You know, we have our embryos and that proves a point, like it, it's there. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's there. How about you? Um, yes, because, I don't know, the Bible says we were supposed to be fruitful and multiply, and it was a struggle trying to understand why we weren't multiplying. And I think physically, there's always been an insecurity about myself, you know, always thinking that I'm too big, or that if I lost a little bit more weight that we would be able to get pregnant faster, or if I ate better or cooked better, healthier food for us, that we would both be in a good physical state that we can have these kids. And I felt like physically I wasn't a true woman and mentally I wasn't a true woman because I wasn't having these kids. And maybe even spiritually, I wasn't a true daughter of Christ because why would he give me that desire to have kids and not 
not follow through with it, you know, not bless us with those kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we got diagnosed with breast cancer, having a mastectomy, then even more physically, I felt like less of a woman because now, you know, you want to be able to, well, I wanted to be able to breastfeed and now I'm down one breast and it's kind of like, am I half a woman now because, because this happened and am I, am I not physically, uh, because I'm not physically 100% now, God's really not going to bless us. <clears throat> um, do you ever think God is punishing you? No. You know, there's so many things that we want for each other. We want for our marriage and for our future family. And yes, God may throw curveballs at us, but but God, I always remember that, but God, I mean, no one else could have healed the cancer. No one else could have brought us together. No one else could have um, placed our life group in our lives and pretty much throw us a wedding in like, what, three weeks? Like only God can do that. And despite not having what we really want right now, I always think about, um, Habakkuk, I think it's in Habakkuk where they were talking about how the vine had no prunes, how there was a drought, how the land was barren. But through it all, are you going to still praise God? And I have to think about that. Like, there's our God doesn't punish us. He just puts us through things that only make us stronger. And I have to remind myself of that when things aren't going right and I want to give up, I can always look up. I can look up to God. Mm. <coughs> um, before you were diagnosed um, and during that whole entire ordeal with, with that, you know, with your situation and, and our situation, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I really did feel like I was, that we were being punished and I don't know why. I mean, you know, I'm just as sinful as, as anyone else, but it's like, why were we handed this, this um, you know, bad hand of cards? And, you know, I started a new job and, and, you know, you got diagnosed and it was just like a whirlwind of emotions. We moved out and we moved back in with our parents. And, you know, it was, it, it was kind of heartbreaking because, you know, especially as a man, I, I want to provide for you. I want to be able to, to be there for you. But how can I do that when, you know, financially we're not really stable and then we have to, we have to live in this world, you know, but um, we got through it, like you said, and now I don't feel like he's punishing us. I mean, if anything, you know, we are being blessed. Um, we're super blessed uh, just to be, just to be where we're at. I mean, you know, you're completely healed. You know, we have our, our four embryos, like what more can we ask for? You know, I mean, we have our life groups, um, you know, they, they bless us and, and just everything in our life is just like a complete 180 from where we were at. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we didn't see that before, you know, at least for me, I, I couldn't see that just because I was in, in a fog. But um, I, I, I can't say that we're, we're being punished because that is not the case. I mean, if we're really looking at what God is doing in our lives, I mean, this is our life right now. God is up here and we're just in this fog right here. And so now that we're past that, you know, we can see through the through the fog and, and past everything what lies ahead and he has you know all the way up there. So my turn. What's your biggest fear? Um, with regards to this, I mean my, my biggest fear uh, is not with regards to the kids, I mean, it's not um, it, it's not working out with, with our embryos. Like, if the doctor said it, it didn't work, that would be devastating, to be honest, because, you know, we, um, you know, you're not the same after chemotherapy, and your body's not the same, and we're older, and, you know, we're not getting any younger, and it, 
if he were to turn around and say that it, it didn't work, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea what, what I would do, but I, I, mean, I have to remain faithful. I gotta remain strong. But that, if you ask me, that, that is my biggest fear. I think about that almost every day. Um, and just the impact it's gonna have on us and how would we react to it? You know, because if they tell us that it didn't work, I mean, you know, like, I don't know if we have a second shot. So, how about you? Um, Short-term fear, probably the same. Um, Fertility is expensive. <laughs> and what if God, you know, allowed us to go through all that? And then we get to September, because we're, we're going to implant in September. Mm -hmm. What if he... <laughs> if he doesn't want us to have our own children. And as fearful as it is, um, I can still praise him because he has all these other children around us. I mean, we're godparents to so many kids, like what, over 10 kids from people at this church that have, <coughs> have encouraged us and have lived life with us the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like we may not have, <laughs> we may not have our own kids, but we can see all these other children being raised up and as godparents, you know, mm -hmm. we have a role in that. Yeah. We are, we're accountable for them too. Yeah. And what's the number one thing God has shown you through infertility? <clears throat> um, how to deal with debt. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, number one thing is uh, fortitude and being strong-willed uh, and having that mindset that um, it's, gonna happen um, you know we see other people that other ki couples they have their kids and it's great you know and we love that but at the same time just knowing that we're not at that place yet um, you know he he tasked us with with our situation and I think we have to look past not having the kids and how can we use that to bless other people to encourage people not just about the cancer, not just about infertility, but just in life in general. I mean, you know, you, you work at a hospital and how can you use your job, your talents to to bless other people? Um, and I think, I think, you know, for the most part, it, it's, he gives us these situations so that we can try to, to help other people. Uh, and I think that's the lesson learned because, yeah, we went through your cancer and, and chemo and not having these kids, that, that's tough, I get that. But that's just one part of our life. You know, we have X amount of years that we're gonna be living and who's to say that we're not gonna run into someone with that exact situation and boom, we'll be able to tell them, when I was your age, we went through this, this, and this, this is how you approach it and this is how you get through it. That's true. Remember that couple at the marriage retreat? They approached us, remember? Mm. Pastor Mal said people struggle with fertility they, to stand up and they, pr they they prayed for us. Yeah, yeah, and then that couple yeah. approached us and said, they, what did he say? He said, um, we saw you and we just want you to know that it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. 